Hello everybody, it is Andrew here with Uvify. Today we'll be showing off the Draco. In this particular video, we're going to be going over the kind of quick start video about how to get into setting up your Draco and out in the field and flying. In the mail, you'll receive something very similar to this box here. And once you pull it out, you'll pull out the Draco itself, a battery, several propellers that we will install later, a charger, some tools, and some other documentation. You'll have to get your own radio, or if you bought a kit with a radio, you'll have to get it out at this point. So once we have the Draco here, we need to bind this to our radio. We have a bind button on the top up here and a USB port at the back here. It has a little rubber dust cover that might be covering it when you initially get it out of the box. So to initially power the unit, you can use a micro USB of any type, which was included. And you can power it either through something like a laptop, phone, tablet, or power bank. Basically, you need to get power to this USB port, and then we plug in our USB cable. Give it a second while holding the button. You'll see the lights on the back will turn on and then start blinking yellow. The blinking yellow tone on the back LEDs means that it is in bind mode and ready to bind with your radio. This will vary, obviously, by the type of radio you get. But for this one in particular, this is a DSMX unit. It'll be going into bind mode with yellow blinking on the back. This should be very similar depending on the radio you have. Now, depending on the radio, with mine, I hold a bind button and power to turn on the radio and bind it. And there we go, bind complete. So the radio tells me that it is now bound to the unit. And once that is done, you will see that the green light will come on. It is blinking red right now because I have no battery plugged in. But basically that yellow light will go away once bind is complete. So we'll unplug the USB port now as that is complete. And you won't need that again unless you need to do later configuration. The next step is to make sure your battery is charged. When you receive this out of the box, you can push the little indicator dial here and see what the charge state is of your battery. Uh, this ba current battery is about three bars, 75%. You will need to charge this before you go out and fly. So to do that, take the battery, Plug in your charger and simply plug the unit in. You'll start seeing indicators on the battery itself that it is charging. And once all the lights go out, that means it is fully charged. So now that we have a charged battery and we have a bound radio, we know that these two units are ready to go. To do that, we just simply plug this battery in. Note that these are smart batteries. We start with our radio on and then we power our drone. To do this, the power button is pushed short and long. Basically, you'll see the lights come up as we do this. Once the drone is powered, you'll see LEDs, you'll hear tones, and basically, she is powered and ready to go. Please note that when you're doing this initial setup to keep your props off. If anything does go wrong, we want you to be safe and not have these things, you know, doing a little choppy chop. What we're looking to do here is check that our channels on the radio are correct for what the drone is looking for. For example, if we go up and down here on the throttle stick, we want to make sure that the drone knows that that is indeed up and down on the throttle stick. Depending on how you have your radio set up, yours will be different from how I have it set up, but we'll have a separate guide on how to configure all of this later as well. So for my drone, I have a switch on the back here that basically arms the drone, and then I can check my channels by moving the sticks. So throttle up or down. You can also go right or left. You can go forward, back, right or left. So the idea being here is that you don't have the props on, so you can't really see how it reacts, but the best way to actually tell, stick it in your hand while you do these movements. You'll be able to feel it trying to turn left or right. Obviously throttle is relatively obvious. Same with left and right. It's not as obvious, but basically as long as it's reacting decently correct, it should be okay. We still advise you to check your channels within the configurator itself. So basically we have now our control link set up between the radio and the Uvify Draco. Let's do a quick show off of all the LEDs because they're pretty cool. All these LEDs are configurable. Uh, in terms of the front and the back LEDs, they're addressable from the flight controller so they can show certain patterns. For example, right now it is all green showing that it's ready to arm. If for example, you have it upside down, or something like that in a way that it cannot arm. This unit is only meant to arm level or close to level. 
then it'll start blinking its green light, meaning that it's not ready to arm. If it's also blinking red at the same time, it means your battery is low, but you can also see this on the battery indicator here. Part of this setup, we'll be looking at the FPV camera angle. So default out of the box, this may came at zero degrees, which is good for any beginner or anyone that's kind of just having fun out in the park. So this unit here in particular for my racing units is set up at 40 degrees. I'll quickly show you now how to change that. You'll have a tool similar to this uh, in the box. There's basically two bolts, one here and one here, either side. These need to be taken out for you to get access to the camera itself. Simply back these out. and keep them in a safe place. They are pretty small bolts, so you don't want to lose them. So, once you've taken the two bolts off, this nose cone simply slides off, like so. If you ever need to replace any of the parts, a lot of them are very easily removable like this with a couple bolts. So, on the underside here, you can see the camera bracket itself. There are two bolts on this unit here, uh, right here and right here. Basically, this top one here is set for setting the camera angle. So, what you need to do is back this one off. You don't have to remove it completely, but simply back it off a couple turns. Be careful not to strip any of these units. You don't need to use too much force. Once they're loose, I can simply click the camera down there we go, that is down to zero degrees, like you probably will be getting it in the box. You can either click it up to 20 degrees, 40 degrees, or if you're crazy, 60 degrees. So I'm gonna set it back to my 40 degrees that I erase with normally, take my screwdriver and tighten those two top bolts back down. Basically, to change your camera angle at any point, you have to do this simple process. But once you get it set, it's relatively simple as you just have to keep it uh, at that angle until you want to change it otherwise. So once those two bolts at the top are tightened down, we take our cover, slide it back on, and insert our two bolts into the side once again. Again, you do not need to over tighten these uh, too extensively, basically to the end of the thread and the little turn past that. You'll also need to do this procedure if uh, you would like to update the HD version of the Draco. Uh, there will be a separ separate video to check out about that as well. So now that we have the FPV camera angle set up, we can now look at our FPV feed. So to do this, we need to power on the radio first. This is a recommendation every time you go fly that you do power up the radio first. Just make sure this unit doesn't go into a fail safe. Uh, and if you have that incorrectly set up, bad things can happen. But always power your radio on first. Once your radio is powered, you can turn the drone on itself. Again, short and long on the power button. You'll get the drone starting up like that. So once the drone is powered, hello, it'll be looking at you here. I'm looking at a separate screen on the side here, but we'll be recording that for you. If you have something like these goggles or a different screen or whatever you have the video uh, receiver hooked up to, you'll be able to see that feed in your goggles. So. What we'll be looking to do here is going through the OSD settings quickly to show you how to set them up. So to do anything with the OSD, you do need your radio turned on and powered and you also need the drone powered. So to enter the OSD, you hold left on the roll stick for three seconds. Once these three seconds are up, you're within the OSD and can change any of those settings. The main things that you have to change in the OSD, you have access to basically everything in terms of settings, but what we're looking to change is something like the VTX settings. So we're going to VTX here, and what we're looking to change is our channel or our power output, depending on what you want to fly with. So in here, you can simply scroll with the right stick, up, down, left, right, uh, depending on what you want to do. Once you have those uh, settings changed, you simply go exit or save and exit if you want to keep the changes that you just made. Right stick to the right to save those settings. The other settings that you might have to change is in the OSD. Uh, and what you want to do here is change your call sign to whatever your name you want to put on there. If you do want to unlock the higher outputs of the VTX, uh, you will need to change the call sign to your own call sign away from the stock UVify call sign. So once you have done that, you can exit. 
Uh, there are other settings within this menu, but we won't be going into all of them today. There will be a separate video for all the OSD settings. So once you're done with the OSD, you can click exit. Now, if you initially power your drone on and you can't find the video channel, most of these units default to A1, which is kind of a standard video channel. But depending on your receiver, um, you, can scan these, uh, you can scan these channels to try to find the channel that you're looking for. This setup I have on a different channel out of uh, stock, but it is easy, relatively easy to find your channel. Uh, it's basically scanning through the channels yourself. So the other thing we're looking at that the camera lens is in focus. We're looking right now at myself and as you can see that everything here is on focus. But keep in mind that if you're setting this up in your house, everything close to you that might be in focus will be in focus now, but once you go out to the field, might go out of focus because you're looking at something farther away. So if you can, and make sure that the lens is actually focused for something a bit farther behind you rather than something up close here. So once that is easily done by just turning the lens there's a little lock ring on this lens as well as the lens itself and you can turn these back and forth until you get it focused. These should be focused out of the box, but just make sure to check that. We've checked our channels and we know the order is correct. So the next thing we're looking to do now is basically go out and fly. So what we're going to do now is just power everything down quickly. When you get out to the field, there are several things to check. First thing is first that you have indeed charged your batteries. Now, you will see in the on-screen display in the video feed whether or not this battery is charged or not, but you can obviously just click the button itself to see where the charge is at. If you're down around one, one blinking bar or one bar, you probably shouldn't fly the battery. Any higher than that, you can fly for however long the battery is charged for. On the back is the VTX antenna. So you need to make sure that this is tight. There will be an included tool to basically tighten this unit down, make sure it won't fly away. Again, don't need to over tighten this, just a little bit to make sure that it won't go anywhere. Next step is to check the arm bolts quickly. So you don't have to do this every flight, but if you ever have a crash or any other type of incident, it's best to just quickly to check that all these bolts on the arms are all tight. Now you use a tool similar to this one, it'll be a slightly different in the kit that you get. Basically put it in and just do a quick, okay, that one's tight, we're good to go. Do the same for all of them. If they just need to be, again, a slight tighten, do have a, a thread lock on them that makes sure that they don't back out due to vibration. Once the quick aircraft check is done like that, you can install props. If you've flown before, you probably have props on already and you don't need to do this step. However, we'll quickly do this. We'll take the nuts off. Now, the two motors on opposite sides actually rotate in different directions. Because of this, the actual nut that goes onto these will tighten in different directions. Most people are used to kind of the rule of lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, and that only applies to two of the motors in this case. The other two are actually backwards. Now, we have incorporated little arrows on the top as well as an unlock symbol to kind of show you which direction you need to turn that nut to get it off. So for example, this front left motor here, you can see the arrows are turning in this direction like that. So I will turn the nut in that direction to take it off. The same as for this one, this one, and this one. You basically hold the motor and turn the nut in the direction that the arrows are pointing. Once you've got the nut off, you can take your prop, slide it on the top like that. Again, the arrows point in the direction that the prop also spins. So you want your high leading edge turning in this direction. This is basically the writing on the prop. So once that is on, now we tighten our bolt back down. To do this, you just finger tighten the bolt down like so, and you get your prop tool, similar to this, but maybe not this exact one, and actually finish tightening it down. Make sure that it is tight and the prop isn't slipping. You can do this by holding the motor and just kind of touching the edge of the prop. If it's not slipping, then you're good to go. Basically, repeat this process for all four of the props. Once you have the props installed and you've checked all the bolts are tight and that the SMA connector is also tight, we're basically ready to fly. So once you're ready to go, you can power up the radio, you can power up the drone itself. And you can power up your goggles and check that your video feed is okay. So I can look into my goggles, see that my video feed is okay, and I'm ready to fly. Now for an initial test, I recommend that you put the Draco about 10 feet or three meters away from you 
and just do a quick arm check to make sure that everything is spinning the correct direction and everything is working correctly. I also recommend you do a quick hover test where you kind of just take it off the ground, hover it in front of you, and make sure that everything is working okay. Depending on what mode you're in, this will behave differently. So once that flight check is done, put it back down on the ground, put your goggles on, and feel the freedom of flight. It's pretty amazing once you get in the goggles. Even if it's your first time, even if it's your hundredth time, every time, it's always a lot of fun. I still get the thrill of it every time I put my goggles on. So once you have landed the Draco at the end of your flight, please make sure to press the uh, power button to turn the Draco off. And then you can unplug the battery, grab a new one, pop it in, and ready to go again. If you did crash, please check that your props are in good condition. Either if there's any dings or they're bent or anything looks out of shape, please replace those props uh, so that you don't have to have bad vibrations within the system. So if you're flying with bent props, that can cause excessive heat within the system or excessive vibration to reach the flight controller and give you a bad flight experience. So please make sure that you do change your props if you crash and they do look damaged. Also, please check quickly that the bolts are tight and nothing is loosened and that everything else looks normal after a crash. So when you're flying this unit, please fly responsibly and please fly safely. So thank you for joining us in this video for the quick introduction about how to get your Uvify Draco set up and ready to go. So go out and have some fun with the Uvify Draco.